What's going on guys, Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. Today we're breaking down the 2023 Australian Open men's final between Djokovic and Tsitsipas. I'm gonna show you exactly tactically how Djokovic beat Tsitsipas in this match. If you wanna find out how it was done, stay tuned because it's coming up next. I usually start these videos off with points won by rally length numbers, so we'll take a look at those in a second. Remember, Djokovic had a hamstring injury, but in this match, did that affect the points won by rally length? So we had one to four shot points in this match, where 58% of all the points played with Djokovic winning 51% of those. Five to eight shot points, where 20% of the points played with Djokovic winning 55% of those. Nine to 12 shot points, where 14% of the points played with Djokovic winning 57% of those. And 13 plus shot points, where 8% of the points played with Tsitsipas winning 53% of those. So if we look at the nine plus category, right? That's the 9 to 12 and 13 plus added together. Those were actually 22% of all the points played. So about one out of five, one out of four points were a very long point in this match. Both guys were athletic and willing to grind in certain situations, right? So how did Djokovic beat Tsitsipas in this match? One of the biggest weapons he has is his second serve return and specifically his second serve return position and ability to do damage off of second serve returns. So let's look at some of those second serve return points right now. All right guys, so let's look at this point in real time before we jump in and analyze it. Second serve from Tsitsipas, aggressive return from Djokovic, does some damage with that forehand right there, and then the miss shot from Steph on the next one. Now let's jump into the actual analysis and we'll start to slow things down, right? So we got Tsitsipas serving on the far side, Novak, receiving on the near side. Djokovic is returning from zone four, which is behind the baseline. But we're gonna see as the serve comes through from Steph and he hits that slice, Novak ends up inside the baseline. He's actually making contact with the ball from zone number three. So if we just go back for a second, Novak likes to start on second serve returns behind the baseline in this position right here, right? Move forward, and then when he's actually making contact, he's now closer to Steph than he was when he started. So that means Tsitsipas has less time to react to Djokovic's return because Novak is physically closer to him. We can see Steph is also inside the baseline after contact on his second serve, right? So in this situation, Novak a lot of times likes to take returns and typically hit them deep back here in zone three, but on this particular return, he's going more for pace and he's focusing on the pace to do damage versus the depth that he would normally get back here. So this one lands in zone two and what costs Steph on this particular return, right, is that Steph tends to have a higher backswing on his forehands. Let's go back for a second here. Look at the backswing height from Tsitsipas right here. What we see is Steph usually brings the hitting hand up to or above his hitting shoulder. And in this situation where he's rushed by the return, he should really cut the swing in half and take a lower height swing to make up for the lack of time that he has. But he doesn't do it on this particular shot. What happens from there, guys, is he ends up with a pretty low contact point because he's taking the ball very early, all right? He's trying not to give up ground on the baseline. But what happens from that is he ends up rolling up on his shot with a lot of topspin here. Look at the finish over the shoulder. And when he rolls up, Djokovic goes from this very wide position and a more of a defensive lunging position and that rolling up with topspin is going to give Djokovic the opportunity here to step around very quickly. Look at that. He sneaks around super fast with the footwork. Tsitsipas hits this weak ball in zone two that sits up and now Djokovic is looking to crank that big forehand. And there it is right there, right? So the great return starts it off right here. Laser doesn't give Tsitsipas time. Tsitsipas does not shorten up the backswing enough. He takes too big of a backswing. He rolls up. Djokovic sees that rolling motion, steps around, and decides he's going to crank the forehand because he has a ball that he can do it off of right here, okay? Now he goes small target right there. Feels comfortable enough to take this small target. And what do we see from Steph as Djokovic goes small target? We see the racket face here is wide open. And we know from that position, right? Racket face wide open, guys. We know that's a defensive position. He's getting ready to slice or hit something that's not as aggressive. So there it is. And then he sprays that ball wide. But Djokovic does a phenomenal job with court position here to do damage. Starts in zone four, moves into zone three. 
does the damage with his pace and what is damage, right? Damage is any time that you get your opponent on their back foot, get your opponent stretch or reaching. Basically, any time that you hurt your opponent and force them to hit a ball that you can get aggressive with on the next ball. This ball did just enough damage to allow Novak to step around here, crank for a small target, another defensive shot here, forces the air with the damage from the forehand. So great stuff from Novak. Let's move on to point number two now. All right, guys, before we break this down, let's let this play through once in real time. Steph serving, second serve. Nice return from Novak. Steph rolls the backhand. Novak cranks the forehand. And then a forced air there from Steph. So let's break it down now, guys. All right, so again, we've got Steph serving on the near side here. Deuce side, Novak in zone four again, like we talked about with the previous return point. Starts in zone four. Steph here with a nice serve down the tee, right? Hits a pretty aggressive, pretty good pace on that. And Novak does a pretty good job here, guys. Again, just making contact in front of the baseline right here, just inside of zone three. And that's something he does really, really well. And what he does in this particular one, especially from this very stretched position, right? When you're in a stretch position like this, and what we see with Novak is his head is not over his hips. That means we're lacking some balance on our shot. So this is a tough situation to be in because usually when we're lacking some balance on a shot like this, we're gonna to tend to hit a weaker or shorter ball. But what does Novak end up doing in this particular situation? He hits short, but with enough pace where Sitsipas here doesn't have time to hit an aggressive shot. Steph is hitting a ball from a low position. And when we're hitting from a low position like this, it means we have to roll the ball up and over the net. And when we have to roll up and over the net like this, that means there's a very good chance our ball is going to sit up on the other side over here and our opponent can then attack us. So let's see if that happens with a sitting up. There it is. That's all that Novak needed. Novak's return again wasn't deep here, but it was low and fast enough that Sitsipas didn't have time to get aggressive. He rolls up and look at Novak dancing around, getting ready to crank the forehand, right? That gave him time to do it. He steps around now, very comfortable, really loaded his body on this particular forehand right here, cranks the forehand, really goes for a big cut on this inside-in forehand here. Big cut right here, takes it down the line, drives it and takes Sitsi Poss, right, from one side of the court over here, guys, and gets him all the way over here, forces movement. And that movement and that positioning right here for Steph gets him to make the air right there. But it all starts with the return. Djokovic starts in zone four, moves in just a little bit here. Look at his position there, just inside the baseline, makes contact in front of the baseline, takes Steph's time away with a low, aggressive return. Tsitsipas is forced to hit up on this ball. It sits up, which lets Djokovic easily move around and crank the forehand. And that does damage and Steph makes the air right there. So why is that position on the return to serve so important for Djokovic? We talked about when you're returning from zone three, you're taking time from the server and you're applying pressure by not giving them time to react. So let's look at the zone return stats here real quick to see what percentage of returns Djokovic hit from zone three, four, and five compared to Tsitsipas. If you look at the zone three returns, Djokovic hit 97% of second serve returns from zone three. Sitsipas, 16%. Zone four returns, Djokovic was 3% from zone four. Sitsipas, 66%. And zone five, Djokovic, 0%. And Sitsipas, 19%. Now, as a one-hander, a lot of times, players have a bigger grip change, and they need more time to make their change on the return of serve. So for Sitsipas, it probably is a matter of time with a one-handed backhand versus Djokovic having the advantage of that two-hander and the second hand on there ready for support. If there's one thing that we know about Djokovic, right, it is that he has superior depth, hitting a lot of his shots into his opponent's side of the court in zone three. What were the stats for depth in this match? It looks like Djokovic hit 40% of his shots in this match in zone three. Tsitsipas did very well, but it was able to only hit 33% of his shots in zone three. So again, Djokovic with superior depth, which allows him to do damage to his opponents and then get aggressive a lot of times on the next shot. Let's follow up and look at the third point now, guys, and let's look at some of that depth in action. So before we break it down, let's watch the point real time here real quick. Djokovic serving on the ad side. Steph with the zone two return. Djokovic gets zone three. 
drives aggressive there into zone two, steps around a zone three forehand, cranks that, and then finishes with a small target winner. So let's actually break this thing down now, guys, frame by frame. Djokovic here on the far side, ad side, and Steph here on the near side getting ready to return. Cranks the flat serve. So how do we know the flat serve is coming? Let's look at the technique things, right? Djokovic here, nice stance, but we see the contact right here. Very typical of the flat serve that we're gonna have a contact position just to the right of the shoulder or above the shoulder a little bit. And in front of you, we can also see the position of the racket face guys here very clearly the racket face is in a flatter position. We're not going for a slice serve or a kick serve, and this is the racket face position we see on a flat serve. We get the big flat serve right out here, out wide to Sitsipas, and Steph takes it and tries to make contact in front, but he's a little bit late with the contact. And when we're a little bit late with contact, when it's too far into our body, a lot of times what happens is we end up hitting short in zone two or zone one, and that may give Djokovic the chance to step around, guys, and crank a forehand. Let's see what happens. You can see Novak already actually is kind of leaning this way, so he's expecting a short return. And there it is, right? He doesn't take a forehand, but he gets a short return here in zone two, and he's very comfortable doing damage with his backhand, so let's see again what he does with the backhand. And he's confident enough to just go backhand to backhand with Steph and get zone three depth right here and try to see if Sitsipas can do anything from this deep position in the court. Sitsipas actually shanked that backhand just a little bit. That was not a clean hit. He's a little bit jammed up with the contact right here. You can see he's a little bit too close to the ball, not only left to right with his contact, but also front to back. And that means a lot of times we're gonna hit either shanks or we're gonna end up hitting weak balls in the court. He actually gets pretty good depth here, right? Just in the front edge of zone three. Let's see what Novak does. And he just cranks that basically inside out backhand. He's very comfortable there. I tell everyone out there, when you're developing juniors, you're developing players at any level, if you're trying to play at a higher level, everyone sort of has a great forehand these days. Everybody knows that technique and what to do. Have a monster backhand that you can be dangerous on both sides and do damage on both sides to your opponent, okay? So Djokovic leans on this backhand. I like how he's really leaning into backhands now, a la Serena, actually, who's talked about on her backhand technique. She likes to lean into it. He's leaning here. Big time shot right there. Does damage. Even though it's only in zone two, he's got Steph on the dead run right here off balance. Sitsipas hits weak here in zone one this time. And on that stretch, that gives Novak the chance to really step around the backhand now to crank that big forehand, right? There it is. Again, zone three depth, guys. Time after time, Novak finding zone three just on so many balls over and over again. Steph on the dead run, late contact again. Let's see what he gets for depth on that late contact. Not bad considering the shot, but it's hanging up. Look at this, and I'll tell you how I know it's hanging up. Look at Djokovic. He's winding up like a boxer, getting ready to deliver a haymaker. Big high backswing. He's loading his legs and his body. He's got all day, so that's how you know Steph's ball is really sitting up on Novak's side of the court here. And then there's the winner into the small target. Djokovic had so much time on this ball, right, that he felt very comfortable aiming into a small target over here to finish Steph off. And that's what he does, zone three plus small target. Let's move on to the fourth point now, guys. And same thing on the fourth one, we're gonna let this play through before we break it down in real time. Djokovic serving again, second serve. Steph takes it, rolls it into zone two, hitting those loopy topspin backhands, gets him on the run there. A lot of big targets in this point, right? Djokovic on the move there, another big target into zone three. Djokovic steps around, cranks another one. Keeps isolating that backhand, right? Most of the target's there, and then finishes into the open court. Let's break this down now. All right, so we've got Novak serving near side, add side, and Steph in zone four to start this off on the second serve return. Djokovic with a very obvious kick serve, right? Kick serve cues, we know for sure, right? The body tends to be a little bit more sideways on a kick serve at contact. This is very sideways at this point in the contact. Also, the way the racket is leading up to contact and the path of the swing will be more like this on a true kick. And we see the kick there. Steph takes it, zone four, right? We talked about not a lot of second serve returns for Steph in zone three and rolls it, but ends up hitting it short here in zone two. This gives Djokovic the easy opportunity, right, off of his serve here to move this way to try to attack right away with his forehand. He does that. 
zone three depth. Steph does a very nice job, though, I'll say this, taking that zone three ball from Novak right here and handling it well, okay, look at that, and then really rolling up high. Look at his finish and how his hitting hand is well above his head to try to really roll up and get that depth on the shot, okay? Does it right there. Does a nice job getting that back here deep in zone number three. Djokovic off the back foot, though, and this is something I talked about a year or two ago already, but guys doing a really good job now of being in these defensive positions where they're backing up and still getting aggressive and doing damage off balls where they really weren't doing it in the past off these deep zone three balls. He takes it zone three here, gets Steph running from one side to the other, which can produce a short ball. Steph rolls it again. This time, right, we get a really short weak ball in zone one, and Novak is hunting forehands. He's looking for that. And he goes deep again here, right, trying to find basically that zone three depth right here. Steph takes it down the line and moves Novak over a little bit. Djokovic does again, great job. Look at this, zone three. Like time after time, look at the depth on all these balls compared to Tsitsipas, who's had two zone two balls, a zone one ball, and only one zone three ball compared to what Novak's doing with his depth. He rolls that one and gets that a little deeper. Sitsipas does a better job on this shot right here. Djokovic steps around again, though, and again, look at the depth, guys. It's pretty incredible to do this shot after shot. Steph does a good job countering with his own depth right here. Novak this time, though, right? What does Novak do different there? He's literally peppered Steph with five zone three balls in this point, and Sitsipas, to his credit, is defending them and doing a good job staying in the point. So what does Novak do? He recognizes this and makes the decision to actually hit his first zone two ball. But look at where the zone two ball is. It's the widest ball he's hit in the point, and this wide ball has the opportunity to take Steph further off the court. So the deep stuff actually in this point has not worked as well as he wants. He hasn't won the point with the depth. He's hitting a wider, shorter ball to angle Steph off and get Steph in the alley for the first time right here on his recovery. And as soon as he does that, he opens it up. Now he takes this forehand and spanks it down the line into a big target to finish. So the depth was not as effective as Djokovic wanted it to be in this point. So he mixed it up, created a small angle here to get Tsitsipas further off the court. He recognized it, steps around, spanks the forehand into the open court. All right, guys, that wraps it up for part one on how Novak Djokovic beats the final Tsitsipas in the 2023 Australian Open men's final. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'll see you next time.